Greetings, developers, and welcome to another episode of the G Suite Dev Show. I'm your host, Wesley Chun. You may have heard about Google Drive's Team Drives feature recently. There's plenty of excitement around this product, but beyond its hype and the solutions it brings, let's introduce you to writing Team Drive applications using the Google Drive API. If you're really new to Team Drives and want to know how to use them, check out this guided tutorial. Down below in the video description, you'll also find Team Drive announcements as well as an intro video. So why Team Drives? If you use G Suite in your organization, Google Drive is likely at the center of your company documents and collaboration. However, Drive was designed around users. Users are owners of files. Users share documents with other users. Users collaborate on documents, and so on. But this model doesn't work as well in larger organizations that are more team-oriented rather than user-centric. Employees changing teams or leaving the company altogether may result in files going missing. Common solutions like assigning new owners to files, using shared folders, and even Google Groups isn't always successful as files still appear to go missing. Well, this is why team drives were created, to solve these core problems for G Suite customers. No more confusion and mysteriously missing files. Think of team drives as a completely new type of drive reinvented specifically for teams and organizations. While team drives work in conjunction with regular drive, it's best to consider both as separate parallel universes living side by side from a user's perspective, just like in the user interface you see here. That'll help avoid confusion. While team drives are relatively new, we don't think you should have to write completely new apps just to leverage team drives. The good news for those of you already using the Drive API is that you only need to augment your code to support team drives, and only when you're ready to add team drive functionality. Yes, there's a new collection of methods plus additional arguments to existing methods for team drives, but the net result is that all of your existing applications will continue to function normally with regular drive. So what are some of the basic operations that any drive developer should know, regardless of the type of application you have? Well, one, you should be able to create a team drive. Two, you should also know how to add members to a team drive. Three, you should also be able to create a folder in a team drive. And four, you should be able to import or upload files to a team drive folder. We'll look at more advanced skills in upcoming videos, but you got to start somewhere, right? Before we walk through our code sample that does all four of these, make sure that you have an applicable G Suite domain, administrative access to be able to manipulate team drives in that domain. Next, you should have the Google API's client library installed in your development language. We'll demo in Python because one, I know a little something about it, and two, it makes for great pseudocode for everyone else. Finally, you should have a project in the developer's console with the Drive API enabled. Once you're ready to go, let's walk through this demo script on the computer. Okay, on lines 1 through 14, we have our boilerplate imports and authorization code. But there are a couple of lines to look more carefully at. In our application, we need a universally unique identifier, and we'll show you where that comes in, but we import that on line 2. On line 8, we need the full read-write scope for Google Drive. And on line 14, we create the service endpoint to the Drive API. We're using version 3 here. Now let's look at our first team drives function. It's called create team drive, or create TD, and it does exactly what you think. It creates a team drive using the create method in the new team drives collection. Line 17 is where that unique identifier comes in. Think of a request ID as a serial number to ensure that apps performing retries don't create duplicate team drives. If you have heard the term idempotent before, this is exactly what we're talking about. UUIDs are unique, so that's why we're using them here. And most programming languages, including Python, have some sort of UUID library. Note, this is the only way to create a team drive. So yes, creating a team drive is different from creating a folder in regular Google Drive. On lines 22 to 25, add user adds a member to a team drive by calling permissions.create, in a way quite similar to sharing a document with another user. The supports team drives flag on line 25 is obviously new and used when calling existing drive API methods but requesting team drive functionality. On 27 to 30, create TD folder creates a folder in a team drive given the team drive ID which we got from the return value of create TD. So create TD folder takes that team drive ID and a folder name. All files and folders can only live in one place on team drives, meaning they can only have one parent. 
This is nearly identical to the code to create a folder in regular drive, except for the supports team drives flag and a single parent. I'll let you guess what import CSV to DD folder does on lines 32 to 35. Like create folder, this code imports a file with files.create, just like for regular drive, but has a supports team drives flag again. And those are the four main functions. The rest of the code is just the supporting cast. Lines 37 to 39 are just various definitions. On 37, we have the MIME type of a Google Drive folder. And on 39, we have the MIME type for Google Sheets files. Sandwiched in between is the CSV file that we're going to import. And by import, we mean upload and convert to Google Sheets format. On disk, we have the file stored with the CSV file extension, so we have to add that here in the media body on line 34. But as a Google Sheet, we no longer need that CSV extension, so we just take the name as is. And you can see that as a second parameter to the function call, which gets assigned into the file's metadata on 33. By the way, if you really want to run this, you're going to have to import your own CSV file, so change the name if necessary. Now you could change this code to upload the raw CSV and not convert to Sheets. And the way you would do that is instead of using the Google Sheets MIME type, you would just use text CSV, which is a MIME type for CSV files. And 41 to 48 just run all of these functions one at a time, then displaying to the user that the function completed. So on line 41, we call create TD to create a team drive called corporate shared TD. And we save the return value, which is the team drive ID. On line 43, we call add user, pass in the team drive ID, and the name of the user we want to add. As before, if you want to really add a user, change this email address to a real one for a user in your domain. On 45, we take the team drive ID and call create TD folder, creating a folder called manufacturing data in my team drive. And then on 47, we call import CSV to TD folder, pass in the folder ID of the folder we just created, manufacturing data, the source file, inventory, or inventory.csv, and the sheets MIME type for conversion. Again, if you don't want to convert, then just use text slash CSV here. And that's it. So that's how you can test drive team drives in less than 50 lines of code. You can read more in the code deep dive blog post and run it with Python 2 or 3, works with both. But no matter which version you use, you should expect the output from the print calls in the script, plus a new team drive folder called corporate share TD, inside of which you'll find a manufacturing data folder. And inside of that, should be your inventory sheets file imported successfully from CSV. To get started, check out this page in the docs that introduces team drives, concepts, some of the rules, and basically how team drives work. Once you're ready to take your first steps, check out this docs page enabling team drive support and specific differences in using the API when writing apps for regular Google Drive versus team drives. Finally, see the complete video from Google Cloud Next 2017, where you'll learn about team drives for developers and hear directly from partners who have already implemented team drive apps. So that's our tour of team drive basics for developers. Keep an eye out for more team drives episodes coming soon. Thanks for joining us today, and please subscribe to our channel. This is Wesley Chen, and we'll see you upstairs in the G Suite. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching. Check out these related videos, and we'll see you next time.